By the time I got home, the heart palpitations had calmed down a bit. I had had a busy evening full of tension and experiences that I didn't want to experience too often. This night was a shock to my system that I had not expected, but then again, I suppose there are men like me everywhere. Being a current police officer, I was better prepared for it than most men. I got myself a beer, a speckled hen, sat down in my favorite chair, and waited, waiting for my sweet, loving wife to come home after a night out with the girls. Damn it, ten minutes passed, then twenty. Just when I was beginning to wonder if their night was over, I heard the sound of a key in the door. This was it, it could have ended in many different ways. By tomorrow, our marriage could have been ruined, but now it was up to her. Jerry? Jenny, she said in surprise as she entered the room. What are you still up to? It was already two in the morning. So, the question was not unreasonable. For the past few months, I'd long since been in bed and asleep when she came home from her weekly nightly walks. So, the question was unexpected. I stared at her, amazed at how beautiful she still was, almost 32, three years younger than me, slim, long-legged, full-breasted, with such a sweet, pretty face. No wonder the guys in that damn club were lining up to get her in their arms on the dance floor. No wonder they were so eager to explore her firm figure and every other body part they could reach with their hands. Did you have a good night, honey? I asked calmly. Not bad, Jerry, she replied casually, nothing special, you know. Good fun, but nothing out of the ordinary. So what I had observed earlier was nothing out of the ordinary, was it? Does that mean she continued in the same vein every Wednesday when she went out with her friends, Sue and Jude? Jenny was about to take off her jacket but then thought twice about it. At any other time, I would hardly have paid attention, but since I knew how revealing her top was, since she had taken off her bra earlier, I could understand why Jenny hesitated. I wondered how many more times she'd come home looking like that while I was asleep in bed and didn't notice anything. Ready for bed, honey, she asked with a smile. At least I won't have to wake you up tonight to get what I need. At least that was true. I couldn't complain about being woken up when she came home from her nightly walks, if I wasn't sleeping too soundly, she'd wake me up, and if I was, we'd catch up in the morning. Wait, Jenny, I stopped her before we went to bed. I want to tell you a little story. Let's leave it until morning, honey, Jenny begged me. I'm really tired, and I need to take a shower before I go to bed. No, Jenny, I told her firmly, and she looked at me intently for the first time, and the smile on her face faded. Take off your coat and sit down, Jenny. It's okay, she replied, sitting down. Take off your coat, Jenny. It's all right, Jerry. I'm quite comfortable. Take your F coat off when I ask you. I shouted. I do I, my wife jumped to her feet in shock, hesitated, and then carefully removed her coat, making sure her arms were folded across her chest. She was trying, only partially successfully, to hide how freely her loose breasts swayed beneath the tight dress. I knew she had lost her bra during her night out. I knew how and where she lost it. I even knew where it was now, it was in my jacket pocket, along with her panties, though I wasn't going to let her know that just yet. I told her how my partner Tom and I had been driving in a patrol car and had spotted what looked like her Volkswagen Golf parked outside the Blue Gown Club, a well-known, albeit dubious club in our seaside town in the south of England. I asked if it was her car or if I was mistaken, as she told me she was going to go to a restaurant for dinner that evening. How much did I know? What exactly did I know? She had no idea, and I saw her frown her eyebrows. The Blue Dress Club, she asked, squinting her eyes as if trying to remember if the word reminded her of it. Yes, that's right. And think before you answer me because our marriage may depend on it. The color disappeared from Jenny's face, and she clutched the desk in front of her, her large breasts rippling freely under her dress as she forgot about trying to hide the disappearance of her bra. Yes, yes, that's it, Jerry, she gasped. It's a club, but with a restaurant. We came there to eat and dance. I asked, dance, Jerry? What do you mean, dance? There's nothing wrong with dancing, Jenny, is there? I teased her. I was just asking if you danced. 
She stared at me silently, trying to guess how much I knew. In all our nine years of marriage, I'd never known her to lie to my face. She was on sticky ground, and she knew it. Did you go to the club, Jerry? asked Jenny, the nervousness in her voice obvious. That's for me to know and you to guess, love, I teased her. So, you were dancing? Jenny shrugged, wrestling with her conscience, desperately trying to guess how much I knew. Yes, we danced, Jerry, she finally admitted. All three of us danced a little. I didn't say anything, just sat there, looking at her, drilling her with my gaze. Okay, we danced quite a bit, then. All three of us danced most of the evening. And who did you dance with, Jenny? I asked, with anyone in particular. With a few different guys, Jenny said. Three girls like us get hit on a lot. That was true too, and I made sure of it. She and her two girlfriends were quite a stunning trio in high heels and flimsy little mini dresses, with bare legs, waving hair, cheeky smiles, and revealing cleavage. There's no one special, Jenny. There's no one you danced with more than everyone else? Jenny's eyes flashed, and she half stood up, half slumped back in her chair, realizing she was trapped. Stop teasing me, you bastard, my wife exploded. How long were you there? What did you see? Ah, now that would be telling, wouldn't it, my love? I let her finish before continuing. Tell me everything you did tonight. Lie to me just once, and our marriage is over. Tell me the truth, and I can just might forgive you. The fact that she didn't argue, at least indicated that she knew she was in serious trouble. Please, Jerry, I love you. Please believe that I didn't mean anything tonight. Just fooling around, flirted a little, but nothing more than that. Then tell me everything, I insisted again, not too unpleasantly despite the tight feeling in my gut. This time, Jenny swallowed hard and with a grim expression on her face, began to tell me what she was up to. At least for the time being, all thoughts of showering or going to bed were put aside. We got there, had a few drinks, and soon guys started coming up to us, flirting and asking us to dance. We flirted back a bit, but nothing serious, just teasing them as usual, and I danced with a few of them. One guy I danced with a little more than the others, but only because he was a good dancer. I knew that last remark was a half-truth. He certainly could dance, but that wasn't the only or even the main reason she'd spent most of the evening with him. From the start, they looked more like a couple in love than two people who had just met each other, and his hands flooded all over her as they danced. Well, that's it, Jerry. We did a lot of dancing with him, but he left about midnight, and the girls and I left much later. True, yes, it was true, but far from the whole truth. So, you didn't go out with this guy, Jenny? I asked, keeping my voice even. Didn't go out? Why would I go out with him? She was stalling, but I still loved her, no matter what. So, I decided to give her some slack, give her another chance to come clean and tell me everything. Black BMW by the seawall, Jenny. How about it? Her face crinkled, and the remnants of color left her face. Jenny distinctly muttered the words, OS, under her breath. Well, I encouraged her in some strange way, I was enjoying her discomfort. Oh, God, Jerry, it's no big deal. I didn't do anything, I promise you. At least, I didn't, I mean, we didn't, you know. After that, Jenny burst into tears and put her head in her hands. How long have you been dating this Norman Jones guy? I asked. Oh, my God, you even know his name, she mumbled, dropping her hands. Oh, I'm so sorry, Jerry. What a damn fool I've been. I nodded my head in agreement, but she was so upset she didn't notice anything. At my job, I could find everything I needed to know about it. If I wanted to, I could find out his damn inner leg length. Leaving her to wallow in her misery for a few more minutes, I decided to move on. There was still much to be decided, so taking her bra out of my jacket pocket, I tossed it to her, asking if she'd lost it somewhere. There was no response. Then I took her panties out of another pocket and, rolling them into a ball, threw them in her direction as well. She could hardly miss them now and moaned pitifully, shaking her head from side to side. 
In this condition, it took her three attempts to speak coherently, but finally, through tears, she begged me to tell her what I had seen. Everything, I told her angrily. Everything, damn it. From the time you let him touch your breasts on the dance floor to the time you let him take your panties off. Oh, Jerry, I'm so sorry. I wish I had never met him, but I didn't let him F Jerry, I swear I didn't let him do that. I let her cry a little, ignoring the barely comprehensible declarations of love for me and the assertions that it didn't mean anything and she didn't let him go all the way. I know, Jenny, I confirmed to her one last time. I watched you together, and if you had let him possess you, we wouldn't be sitting here right now, talking about it. This set her off again. She desperately swore to me that she would never act behind my back again, begged me to forgive her and give her another chance. Stupid bloody cow, as it turned out, I was going to give her another chance. I knew for a fact that he wasn't the first one to grope her breasts, but it was at parties when I was there. We'd all had too much to drink, and frankly, I'd done about the same thing myself. I had another test for her, and it wasn't over yet. To test how much she really valued our marriage, and to see if this Norman guy didn't mean that much to her, I reached into my pants pocket and pulled out a small key and tossed it on the table in front of her. Jenny reached forward and picked it up. What is it? She asked through her tears. Don't you recognize it, Jenny? Oh, yes, my wife agreed, looking at it carefully. It's the key to your handcuffs, isn't it? I told her she was more or less right, but they were outdated, bought online handcuffs that couldn't be traced. Jenny, when you left the club to go to his car, Jenny, he went first, and you followed a few moments afterward, is that correct? She nodded her head in agreement without meeting my gaze, explaining that she didn't want anyone to see them leave together or suspect what they were doing. And when did you get out of his car? I went back to the club first, she explained, as if I hadn't guessed it myself, and Norman followed me five minutes later. Him too? I asked. Jenny looked up fearfully, she gasped and pressed her hand to her mouth. He didn't come back, Jerry. We waited for half an hour, but he never came back. We even went to check his car, it was still parked there, but there was no sign of him. I just smirked at her. It wasn't a very pleasant smirk. It wasn't meant to make her life more pleasant. Then I waited for her to get the point of what I was saying. Oh, my God, Jerry, Jenny shrieked. Does it hit her? What have you done for having sake? What have you done to Norman? After you left, Tom and I dragged my lover out of the car and handcuffed him. He objected a little, but he thought he was being arrested for lewd behavior in public or something. Then we took him to the beach behind the seawall and handcuffed him to the post of the old pier. Only after Tom duct taped his mouth shut did we explain who we really were. What does Tom have to do with all this? Jenny asked, eyes wide. Tom was the one who alerted me to what was going on. He discovered that his wife, June, has been having a full-blown affair with your friend Norman for the past six months. They've been having sex while Tom was on duty. He found out about it, and when he followed him to check it out, he discovered that he'd started hitting on you. If I had reason to hate your friend Norman, Tom had reason to hate him. Oh, God, you bitch. Jenny interjected. It was that cow June who first introduced us, but I had no idea she was involved with him. What are you going to do, Jerry? Leave him there all night? Not that easy, honey, I told her, resorting to one last test. Where we've changed him, the water will be three feet above his head when the tide comes in. Jenny stared at me in amazement, letting out a slight squeal. But you can't let him drown, Jerry. You can't. It would be murder. The way I see it, Jenny, he only has one chance, and I glanced at my watch to check the time. By now, the water should be splashing at his feet. Another 40 minutes, and it'll be over, and it's a 20-minute drive to the beach. She was too shocked to say anything, too shocked to move. If he means that much to you, you'd better hurry up and save him, but if you do, it'll be the end of our marriage. And either way, I'll be out or in jail. If you decide not to do it, then go to bed with me, and I will forgive you. We'll try to get on with our lives as if nothing had happened. 
Jenny, poor cow, sat all shaky, staring at the key in her hand. Not that she didn't deserve it. Only ten minutes to go, Jenny, I informed her after a while. I would soon find out just how much Jenny really loved me. If it wasn't also sad, I could have been quite amused to watch her sit there with dry eyes, but she was shaking with uncontrollable trembling. She felt so guilty that she never once wondered if I was telling the truth. Oh, hell, Tom and I dragged him out of the car and damn near gave him a beating he'd never forget. If he ever sees one of our wives come into the club again, he's gonna throw her out the back door. Not that he's been able to attend any clubs for months, and he'll probably never dance again like he used to. He squealed like a piglet when we suspended him upside down over the seawall as, despite what I said earlier, the tide was just about to come in. Not the most pleasant prospect when you're handcuffed and with two broken legs. Only five minutes left, I addressed her, but she still didn't move. Then Jenny looked up at me and made a brave attempt at a smile. Let's go to bed, Jerry, she muttered nervously. That's right. That brought the ball back into my field of vision, and now it was my turn to make a decision. Had she suffered enough? I wasn't quite sure of that.